Hello and welcome to another out of spec motoring video. I'm being a bit quiet because it's 3.30 in the morning and I am heading out for my first road trip in my brand new Tesla Model S Plaid. Now I'll tell you about the car along the way, but we're going from here in Fort Collins, Colorado, all the way to San Luis Obispo, SLO, in California for a huge Tesla takeover meetup. And uh, of course, by the time this video goes up, that would have already happened. And so this is my first road trip in the Tesla Model S Plaid. So I just picked up this Model S Plaid and then pretty much went straight to Europe. So I think I've only driven it 50 miles or less. It has about 400 miles on it. Some of the guys have been having fun with it. And uh, this is really my first time to get used to it. Now, I actually wanted to take our Tesla Model 3 performance on this trip, but it's making some weird noises. And we have a whole suspension kit from Mountain Pass Performance that we're putting on there. So I was like, okay, if that car's not totally good to go, I put a poll on Twitter. If you don't follow me, it's it's Kyle Connor. If you're not into cars, don't follow me. And um, basically I asked, should we road trip the e-tron, the Rivian, the Model S, or the Model 3? Those were the four cars I was considering out of our fleet of taking. And overwhelmingly people said, take the Model S. So, you know, I was thinking maybe I would keep the miles low, keep this car nice. It just went in for a, a week long, I think 10 day long, full paint restoration uh, with my friend Colton at Clear Detailing. And I was like, oh, well, let's keep this one nice for a little bit. But you guys said, take it on a road trip. So we're going to wake this car up. It's never been DC fast charged. It's only been charged at home. We're going to supercharge it for the first time. I'm bringing my Chatamo adapter and my CCS adapter. So we have all the ways we can plug in this car. It's really the road tripping hack to drive a Tesla around because you can use EA and the supercharger network, which will be super helpful over the Rockies where the supercharger network isn't that great. A lot of older version two chargers where I can actually charge faster on Electrify America, assuming everything goes well. Anyway, let's hop in the Model S Plaid. It's got about 400 miles on the clock. It's 3.30 in the morning and we have 17 hours to do because I need to be at this Tesla meetup thing tomorrow morning. So there's no chance for an overnight really. It's pretty dark out here, so I'm gonna show you around the car. This thing is completely blacked out on the outside. We have our Martian MW05 wheels in 20 inch form. They look just so meaty on this car. We have big brakes that are about to go on by Mountain Pass Performance, but I haven't had time to do any of the upgrades. I landed in from Europe last night I was picked up in the e-tron and now it's time to take the other black electric car to California. So, um, yep, charge it up to 100% state of charge for the first time. I didn't actually let it complete, so it hasn't top balanced. It's at 99% right now. Um, and that happened just pulling out of the garage. So it's actually the first time this car has ever been charged up full. I kind of wanted to do it just because it's been sitting between 30 and 50% for the last six, seven weeks while I've been away on travel, filming videos for the Out of Spec Reviews channel. And so this was really, hey, battery, wake up. Here's where you are just to full charge it a little bit. Um, I didn't think I'd be leaving this early, but I'm actually still on Euro time. So it feels like 10, 11 a.m. to me. So I'm wide awake, ready to go. So time to leave, head out in the plaid, and I'll show you it when the sun comes up. So just taking a look at our route plan here, it looks like it wants to stop early in Edwards, which is a version three charger. But the thing is at 42%, we're not gonna be able to take advantage of those speeds. So we gotta see what's going on with this trip planner. It's been a while since I've done a Tesla road trip and never road tripped to this new Model S. So this is all new. And wow, it's being so conservative, wanting to pull in at very low states of charge. But now it's freaking out, recalculating, don't know what's going on. Um, yep, looks like it wants to go. There's two different options. You could go up the Salt Lake route. This one wants to go on the uh, I-70 route over the Rocky Mountains. And so, yeah, we'll just hit the road. If you take a look here, I should be able to pull up. How do I do this in the Tesla? How do I pull up all of the chargers? At a stop. Okay, that's not it. I don't even know how to pull up all the, oh yeah, this one, boom, all the chargers. Take a look, whoa, the screen is actually super snappy. You can see it wants to skip a whole bunch of superchargers along the way. And so we have plenty of options, plenty of ability. Look at all the freaking superchargers everywhere. Um, so the, the network's great. There's also Electrify America with DC fast charging, uh, 500 amps if we can find a unit that can output it. And so we got all the charging options. This is sort of like a cheat code. Anyway, loving the new Model S. Could use some more ambient lighting though. 
just that little thing down there. How nice would it have been if it had some accent lights through here? Light is the new chrome, as I say. And um, yeah, this is just a little bit lacking in terms of ambient lighting, but I think I have it all on. If I go here to lights, ambient lights off. Oh, wow, you really can't see anything then. Okay, so just Tesla things. It's not like the Audi <laughs> where everything is lit up, but that's okay. Still, I bought this car for the drivetrain. The plaid is totally insane. Road tripping with the yoke wheel, first time. Let's see how this goes using autopilot, all of this stuff. I just got the newest software update on this car. We're pulling out now because I'm bored of waiting around. Uh, let's see, Model S Plaid. We need to come up with a name for this car. And there's my software version, version 2022.24.1. I just updated it last night. So we're heading out of the neighborhood. How do I put my high beams on? Uh, Got to hold this and now they're on. That's stupid. I think my two only major issues with this car were the brakes, which were upgrading to mountain pass and the steering wheel, which I have a round wheel uh, and stocks coming to replace this. Honestly, quite annoying setup for me. So off we go then. First road trip in the plaid. Can't wait. We got a lot of miles ahead of us, about a thousand miles to do by the time we factor in all the little detours. And welcome to Glenwood Springs. Man, does this thing not just look incredible? This is the first time I guess you're getting to see it here on Out of Spec Motoring. And wow, I'll take you on a quick tour of the car, but it's time for its first ever DC fast charge, first ever supercharging session. Now there's actually a 350 kilowatt Electrify America station just down the road that can give the car 500 amps, which maxes out everything it can need but I thought we should make the first session a supercharging one. So here we go, plugged in, first time ever. <laughs> Let's hope that it charges. Uh, nothing's happening and it's gone orange. Still orange, which means it's not plugged in properly. Uh, okay, but it's plugged in, I swear. It says charging stopped charge port latch not engaged okay let's try this again <laughs> oh, no. i never have issues with the tesla connector and there doesn't seem to be any junk in there it's a little dirty though wouldn't you say okay charge port let's go open back up there we go a little slow to respond there and in blue yes good it must have been my mistake by inserting it on a bit of an angle it's a little shy about its first charging session Still blinking blue. Interesting spot for the Tesla logo. This is the new powered charge port for Model S. This one has the swivel screen and all the stuff. And there we go, it's charging. Five kilowatts. Now, this is an early 120 kilowatt station. 
Oh, you can't really see anything. Let's pop down the window, shall we? There we go. Double pane glass, really quiet compared to my Model 3. 104 kilowatts, that's about 110 kilowatts, 111. And again, this is a very early version two supercharger that's not even capable of outputting 150 kilowatts, only 120 or 125, I think 120, it's a real early one, uh, but a beautiful location, perfect spot for its first supercharge. Man, does this thing not just look so beefy on these Martian MW05s. This is the spec to have. Blacked out Model S, these wheels, and this interior. This is why I ordered this car for this view right there. Uh, a little bit about the car. I ordered it a few months ago, sort of when I had a little bit too, too much to drink, then all the cars came in at once. And so I said, okay, well, can't turn down the opportunity. My plaid's here, let's get it. So here it is, and um, it's got probably now 600 miles on the clock because we just did about 200 miles on this drive. Again, not optimizing for maximum road tripping speed, um, but all seems pretty good. Let's take a look at our efficiency on this leg because um, these Martian wheels I have for performance, they're wider and stickier, not necessarily for efficiency. I have the actual aero wheels from Tesla, but um, wow, not bad. Considering we were doing 80, 85 miles an hour, allegedly the whole way, 361 watt hour per mile. Now I chose this particular spot because this was the farthest away supercharger I could make it to from Fort Collins. Uh, Glen Grand Junction is just a little bit too far it's only 75 miles, but I wonder, let's see what time it thinks we'll get there. Mm, too late for the podcast. This is a tough situation I'm in because I have to do the Inside EVs weekly podcast and I'm a little bit early here for it. So I may end up just doing a deep charge here, sort of doing the podcast, topping the car up to 90, 95%. I really don't want to full charge this car too much to help prevent against degradation. Although these things just hold up really well. You guys know from our Model 3 performance, about 10% in 100, 100, what am I trying to say? 10% degradation in 100,000 miles, it's done really well. My goodness, this thing looks freaking sick, doesn't it? So I guess we'll charge it up. Three motors, over a thousand horsepower, it rips. It, it rips, I was just shredding through the canyons on the way in here. You can see beautiful drive roads. I was really hammering it through the corners. And even at like 17% state of charge, this thing still got crazy acceleration. The brakes though, really, really suck. I was coming into corners and I'm like deep in the brake pedal. I'm like, what is going on here? So I really can't wait to get my mountain pass braking system on this car. I think it needs to be a little bit lower as well. It's in the lowest suspension height right now and it's just, just needs another inch, inch drop I think. We can get some lowering links for that. Yep, this thing is a dream to own. I really love it. Well, the sun is coming up here in Glenwood Springs. I really need a haircut, but I haven't had time to do it. I literally flew in last night and I was out on the road earlier today. Um, we are gonna charge up pretty deep here at Glenwood Springs. The reason is I think I'm gonna do the Inside EVs podcast here just so I can get it done out of the way. So we'll have the car charged up to 90, 95%, something like that. Probably 90% is what I'm thinking. Probably all we need. Pretty good efficiency on this car. No need to top charge it and then I'll just pull it off the charger when we're done. I'll get done with the podcast and then we'll get back out on the road. It'll add some time but definitely a needed show to do. Um, met a viewer here already this morning, someone who wasn't, he lives in Wyoming, drives a truck and he's like, oh I watch all your videos and so interested in Rivian and F-150 Lightning. So great to meet that guy and chat. We're already at about 50% state of charge in not that much time. I mean 120 kilowatt charging doesn't sound like much and it's really not if I'm trying to cover distance on a trip, but I'm actually happy that this is a slow charger because again, slower DC charging, it's a little bit easier on the car. I'm in no rush because I'm gonna wait here to do the Inside EVs podcast, which starts in about 10 minutes time. And um, yeah, just, just living the dream. I really can't get over how good this car looks on these Martian MW05s. It's literally perfect once we drop it. Of the YouTube channel State of Charge. We also have the motivational Mr. Martin Lee from the EV News Daily Podcast. Well, after a pretty nice Inside EVs podcast, oh, interesting, there's a bus going by. I thought it was electric because I didn't hear anything, but nope, it's just CNG powered. Um, yeah, pulled off the supercharger, just completed the Inside EVs podcast, took about an hour and a half, so it's now nine o'clock in the morning. That really 
takes a lot of time out of the day, doesn't it? Uh, but we're gonna hop back in the Model S. I charged it to 90% since it ran air conditioning for the last hour and a half. We're down to 88%. We're gonna go to Green River, Utah, which it's expecting a 5% arrival. Maybe I should have charged it up to 95%. That's okay. I think uh, the car has been a little bit conservative and we can just drive slow, build up some buffer on the way there, and then use the rest with speed on our way into Green River. Uh, not many, uh, version three superchargers on this stretch to las vegas only uh version twos here in the rockies except for edwards and i hear tesla is going to be expanding and increasing version three and maybe even version four superchargers here in our area very soon which would be nice um, but our first fast charging session for this car up to 90 percent very good let's head out to green river utah And welcome to Green River, Utah. You and I have been here many times. Looks like they've added a little car washing station and I wanna try out my CCS adapter. So in we go there. First time me using this adapter, I've activated this charger with the app. I'm going to put the CCS thing into this. Now, I think Tesla says this is unofficially like, don't do this, but let's give it a go. Let's see if this thing works. It says, please plug in. I've definitely plugged in. There we go. Blue means it's communicating. And um, I kind of hope this works because in theory, this should be faster than the superchargers, which are down the road. The supercharger has a maximum 150 kilowatts, but that's only a few of the newer ones. Some of the ones here at Green River are actually limited to 120 or 125 kilowatts. This charger can deliver 350 kilowatts. Again, that's only at a higher um, uh, uh, voltage level so it can deliver 500 amps if everything is working correctly but it looks like we're initiating charging so that's all good the car's still thinking okay <laughs> let's hope this all goes through and works uh, someone told me that it doesn't work on the newest software but I think yep I think it may not work on the newest software you can see it just gave up here we'll try it one more time and Tesla may have blocked this in the US at least for now we'll have to see just moving chargers over to a 150 kilowatt unit right here. And yes, it's actually working. So I think it was an issue with that particular charger, the 350 kilowatt charger, just this one didn't work. And I know this particular unit has had issues. This 350 kilowatts actually limited to 50 kilowatts according to the app. And then this is the Chatamo and the CCS 150 kilowatts. Even still, if this unit is outputting 150 kilowatts, let's take a look at how much we're getting then it should be good. Let's see, it's doing 360 amps at 396 volts, 146 kilowatts. I bet that's better than we would get. It, look, we're doing a full 149 right there. I bet that's better than what we'd get at the supercharging station. Now, this car does have free supercharging because of referral miles that I have left over, but look at that, full 150, baby. I'll take it, we're gonna charge up here, why not?
So we're just sitting here in a Tesla at a CCS station. Wow, I haven't done this anywhere outside of Europe. This is pretty crazy. I love this adapter. So the adapter, I don't think has any logic in it really to limit the max current. Uh, it's really up to the charger. We were just doing 154 kilowatts just there, uh, absolutely ripping it into the battery pack. And uh, that, so that's better than the supercharger down the street. So this Green River supercharger has four 150 kilowatt units. Those are the ones farthest away from the street. And I think six or another four 120 kilowatt stations that were uh, closer to the street. Those were the original ones, or 125. So this is faster than going over there since there were two other cars on the farther away ones. And we're just doing it now. Of course, I'm paying for the electricity, 31, 32 cents per kilowatt hour. A big deal. Uh, it's just fun to try out this adapter, fun to try everything out here. Um, I know the Euro CCS adapter for the Model S overheats and my friend Uli puts a rag on it. And so we may have to play around with that with this adapter. Just, just having some fun charging, playing around. I might run in and grab myself a coffee here at the Green River Coffee Shop. You guys know we'd love to make this an out of spec stop. So many projects at once to explore making this ours, but that would be cool. Every time I come here, I'm like, oh, we really need to do this. All right, well, we're at 34% charging at 153 kilowatts. Let me show you the displays the Tesla gives you when CCS charging. Take a look here. You can see we're doing 350 amps at 420 volts. It is moving up and down a little bit. We're ping-ponging between 145 and 150 four kilowatts or so. You can see it goes up and down periodically. And I'm not sure if that's the car uh, ramping up and down its usage or the charger delivering a little bit more or less. This will require just a little bit more time to play around with it, but super cool to see. Let's take a look at our next charging stop along the road. I know there's a few options of some really bad ones. So we want to skip Richfield if possible and we wanna to go to Beaver since that's a version three supercharger. So the nice thing about having this EA and supercharging um, back and forth is, is if this particular station worked, then we would 100% be able to use the 350 kilowatt station over the supercharger and that would be better. Here, it looks like it wants us to charge <laughs> at the Green River Supercharger car. We're charging now, don't worry. Uh, but if I remove the charging stops, it should show us how much percentage it wants to get there. Well, we'll figure it out. Okay, it's got to do some calculations. But essentially, we need to charge a little bit more. It's a long stretch, 185 miles. So I think we're going to charge up to 80, 85%. Uh, probably 80%, which would be pretty good. The thing is, this supercharger in Richfield just sucks. And you, you have to avoid that, if at all possible. That one really blows. But this one should be pretty good. 250 kilowatt max. And that is the plan. And then we can kind of just hop our way down there. So, man, I love having the option of CCS charging. 155 kilowatts, nice. Well, we always have some crazy elevation leaving Green River because we go on a big hill climb. The car's predicting a 4% arrival after 185 miles. Now this car doesn't have the cool energy graph stuff. Yeah, just streaming, don't want that, go away. Um, yeah, and you used to be able to ask the car, I think, show energy graph. And now it has no idea what you're talking about. Could man not available. So I think they got rid of all the energy stuff, which means it's hard for me to do efficiency planning and all of this. So far, let's just take a look at trip data. Cruising at pretty high speed since last charge, 375 watt hour per mile. Not bad. So far, here's our trip, 400 miles in on the nose, let's unplug here. 83% state of charge, we're down to 64 kilowatts. Wow, that's pretty good. Normally Tesla's dropped to 50 kilowatts at 80%. That's awesome. So I say we unplug and head out. So what I'm gonna do is go here to charging and I'm gonna say stop charging, unlock charge port, thank you. And then we should be able to just pull this out. Great, and then I'll put that back in there and we'll hit the road. Let's see, charging session details. We were here 34 minutes. We put in 72 kilowatt hours, 22 bucks. Wish the 350 kilowatt units worked, but hey, we'll take what we can get. Well, the car has automatically put itself into drive, which is very nice. It says stay below 70 miles an hour to reach destination, but this car seems very conservative at the start. So I say we just head out, hit the road, and 
see what happens. I can always drive slower and make it there. And we can always have the bailout option of this charger over here somewhere, but I think we should be just fine. Off we go then in the Model S Plaid with the silly half steering wheel. Not a fan of this thing. Drive to the Beaver Supercharger. Let's keep climbing on. We can't. We're at 4% state of charge. That's the way to do it. Proper out of spec road tripping. Let's get this thing plugged in. 250 kilowatt version three charger. Crazy headwinds on the way out here. I just went as fast as I could, making sure we could still make it. Typical out of spec road tripping style. No issues at all. Man, the plaid has got some pretty good range and efficiency at high speed. Um, even with the Martian wheels, and we got some big wheels on this thing. Wow, already up to 140 kilowatts. Let's see what happens here. While that's ramping up, let's take a look at our trip since last charge. 184 miles, three, so 400 watt hour per mile, uphill, over the mountain pass, huge headwinds. We're talking 20, 30 mile an hour headwinds at pretty high speed on one of the worst stretches heading west. I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is why are we only doing 144 kilowatts? Pretty sure the charging curve ramps up around 10% last time I tested a Plaid, but I think maybe it would have been adapted by now. Anyway, really busy supercharger. You can see the version twos over there have been closed down. They've removed the car wash that was here. You and I have been here many times on this channel. And um, yeah, the nice thing about version three chargers, at least with today's software on them, is there's no power sharing, or I should say there is power sharing, but it doesn't really matter which one you plug into. There's a Model Y on looking like Martian wheels as well. Yes, that looks pretty good. Um, great little gas station thing to do. Look at the original brown Model S over there. Love it. All good stuff here. 148 kilowatts, 150. I'll let you know, 154, this thing should ramp up here to 250 here pretty soon. There it is, 160, 170. The fans are going crazy on this thing. 180, officially the fastest this car has ever been charged. 200, nice, fastest ever. 214, 224, come on, let's see a 250. 235, 242, holy smokes. 247, 250, 252, nice. 
That's what I'm talking about. So we won't be here long. I'm going to charge up until we taper hard and then we'll see what the next charger is to go to along the way. But man, I'm loving this charging right now. So we held 250 kilowatts all the way to 26%. Now I don't have all my scan my Tesla data. It could be a couple things. It could be the actual charging curve of this car. I don't know. I need to spend more time getting to know it. It could be the handle that's thermal throttling in this heat, 90 degrees, running a whole bunch of current through it. That would be a very plausible situation. Could be the battery pack overheating, but I don't think that's the case. So um, not sure, 206 kilowatts, awesome. We'll take it, no questions but it might still be warm enough outside to do the wet rag trick, perhaps on the ride home. I gotta do some experimenting. Really gotta learn this car. All new for me, but wow, I'm loving the Plaid. Such a great cruiser, so quiet. On the highway with active noise canceling, great sound system. Yeah, we're tapering pretty quickly here, which makes me think it's cable temperature more than a charging curve. I bet it would still do 250 kilowatts at 29% just a gut feeling. Anyway, let's see what chargers we have along the way. So if I put in, let's see, Madonna Inn is where we wanna go for this Tesla meetup. This car really needs tinted windows so bad. I'm fishballing it in here. I just haven't had time to get it tinted. There's a modified Model 3 that looks interesting. Um, so it wants to go to Mesquite, which is a version three charger. I'm all in for that. Minus 18%, I'm game. We'll charge up just enough to make it to Mesquite. I think I need to get myself some wet rags. Let's see if this handle feels really freaking toasty, crazy windy, and oh yeah, burning hot. I think it's the handle temperature. Definitely, definitely handle temperature overheating here. Um, yeah, I, I would put money on that. So I bet if we put a cold rag on the cable right now, it would ramp back up. Well, that is the downside of supercharging in the heat, but uh, easy fix at least. Anyway, we figured it out. We're going to Mesquite next, version three charger at a casino, good spot. Oh, I just hit the horn by accident. Sorry to everyone around, no need to freak out. <laughs> Whoops, and uh, yep, heading off. Let's do it. Well, it seems like the wave is kind of clearing out a little bit. It says 10 minutes left to charge, five minutes left to charge here. Uh, don't know why that's a discrepancy. And it says we'll get there at 7%. It's pretty much downhill into Mesquite. And so there looks to be a little bit of traffic around the St. George area, nothing too crazy, but I think we can leave. There's plenty of backup options if needed to get there if we do have an issue, but no need to wait another five minutes. I say, if the thing says we can get there at 8%, we can pretty much get there. The one thing we do have to be mindful of if, is this headwind, or it's a little bit more of a side wind coming this way, uh, but that's okay. I say we just go for it. If we can't make it for whatever reason, we can bail out at any of these superchargers or Electrify America chargers along the way. So we're only doing 128 kilowatts. That's probably what the car actually wants right here. This is probably following the internal charge profile now. Let's unplug and continue on to Mesquite. Quick charging stop, only a few minutes. have arrived in Mesquite and uh, yeah, the Tesla is so conservative. We've arrived with 8% and I think it wanted us to charge for an extra 10 minutes at the last charging stop. Okay, not the out of spec way. This is an already pretty toasty handle. And in we go, version three supercharger. 
Not sure how far we're gonna charge up, but I think we'll hit version three chargers. The cool thing about this is, whenever there's no version three superchargers available, it's faster for us to use the CCS adapter and go to an Electrify America 350 kilowatt unit that can give us 500 amps. When there's a version three charger, this actually delivers, I think, 680 amps when the pack's totally dead. So this is still the fastest way to charge this car. Um, Okay, let's take a look at our charging speeds here, plugging in at 8%, we're at 148 kilowatts. Let's keep an eye if it tapers at this 20, 26% uh, state of charge. It came off of 250 kilowatts last time. Uh, these cars and the version three chargers always seem to start off around 150 and then walk their way up a little bit deeper into the session. They always give some time at, uh, you know, regardless of state of charge plug-in, there must be a time limit as to before they go up to max. Anyway, we'll let this thing climb on up. Looks like it's just about starting to do so. And we'll see how long we hold 250 kilowatts for. Let's take a look at our trip. Headwind, but we lost elevation, 332 watt hour per mile. Pretty good. The distances are significantly longer between charges in this car than the Model 3. So this is a much faster road tripping vehicle. 242 kilowatts, 248, 249, 250. There we go. That's what we're looking for. 251 overachiever. Nice. So here we are at 26% state of charge, still doing 250 kilowatts. Pretty sure it was handle temperature on the last one, 27. Yep, totally handle temperature. We're still rocking as expected. So hoping for a better charging session this time. Of course, big amperage means lots of heat being stuffed into the cable, 101 degrees outside. That's no joke. It is really hot out there today, but welcome to August in Nevada. And so, yep. Can't ask for better charging though. This is an awesome charging session. So in terms of next stops, the car wants to skip all the Vegas ones, which sounds good to me because there's a short wait at this one, but there's 12 available at this one, but then you gotta sit in traffic to get there and that's such a rough station. So I say, yeah, let and two stations have weights. Yeah, let's just skip the Vegas nonsense. We've done that before. And this one's a 150 kilowatt station. So we're already down under 150 kilowatts at 44%. That's not so good. Man, Teslas really need a fatter middle charging curve. Tycon smokes this thing in terms of charging curve. And then we go over here to Baker. So the car wants to do Baker. In terms of Tesla superchargers, Baker makes the most sense, version three, uh, and it's covered, so it should be shaded. And so we only need 15% more to make it at zero, and the car wants 15 minutes. So I actually think we won't charge here as long as the car wants. Similar to last situation, we'll just charge up just enough to make it to Baker. Charged up to 79%, met this cool dude with the black Model S who's a moderator on Tesla Motors Club. We had a great chat, but it means I overcharged a little bit. So we have a 17% arrival. Really didn't feel like I was here long at all. And um, this stupid steering wheel is getting on my nerves. I really hate it. I have the more time I spend with the car. Where, why would my hands ever be down here? I don't know, this is so dumb. Anyway, let's head out on our way to Baker. It's toasty outside, 100 degrees.
And welcome to a very hot Baker, California. 100 degrees and I got some cool stuff to show you here. Only a 150 kilowatt station. What was I thinking? I don't know why I thought it was 250. I swear, I thought it said 250. It must not have. It says 150. And the EA stations over there, those can only do 150 kilowatts on one of them. And then the new units back there, which I'm gonna go take a look at, those are not turned on. So anyway, we'll plug in 7% state of charge. Let's take a look at our trip. 169 miles, 392 watt hour per mile. So definitely under 400 watt hour per mile at let's just say 85 miles an hour, which is the maximum speed vision only autopilot will go. It also won't go to the closest following distance. It goes to two as the closest. And I've had some serious phantom braking, especially in these lighting conditions early this morning, a ton. And definitely right now when the lights are changing, a ton of phantom brakes. But wow, this thing looks so good. So we'll let that connect and charge up. We're on 18A. And then I got some cool stuff to show you just over here. There's 18B. So we have our own cabinet. I picked one in the shade. So hopefully the handle is cooler. Expert level road tripping right there. Right there. Shade cooling. Take a look at this. This is a Tesla, I guess, giant battery pack with some superchargers on it. Uh, I'm going to show you the connection points over there in just a second, but they've run these cables all the way down here into these things, which charge up the unit. Now it's not plugged in right now is what it looks like. Mega pack recharging sequence. Confirm the cam lock disconnect breakers in the open position. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> so neat to see all these superchargers along the side here basically just a giant battery pack and um, they look like version 3 supercharging cabinets very neat to see we got some ea stuff to check out too but this thing is cool first time i've ever seen a mobile supercharger to be honest and i'm really liking it oh that guy's about to curb his wheel okay man this is pretty pretty cool on this trailer right here nice okay that's neat. Let's go take a look at some EA stuff. Walking over here, this is the flagship Electrify America station, but you can see 150 kilowatts here, 150 kilowatts there. Oh, so maybe these have been upgraded to 150 from 50 kilowatts. Okay, but these are the new Electrify America chargers and they seem to be real stout, not turned on. Um, but we got the same handles as before. We got the same cables seemingly Okay, it's Ital Design, but I believe BTC Power makes these. Let's take a look. Yep, BTC Power right there makes them. Okay, cool to take a look at. Pretty tall. They got the spikes on the top so the birds don't crap all over it. They got some cable management. Take a look here. You can see a little bit of this action going on up top. Okay nice looks pretty dang cool i have to say they're not labeled for power output though and there's only one ccs connector which i think um, makes sense you know the other ones have two but you can't charge two cars at once it's just sort of i guess uh, that's what was available on the market good for redundancy i guess sometimes we have to swap handles but this is a really long cable which will be interesting to see how they cool it credit card readers of course buttons feel okay not terrible screens already getting a little dusty there but interesting to see the new chargers i'm liking the design hope they are stout and they can output the power we're looking for the real charging equipment's back over here so just checking on our charging session 144 kilowatts at 19 percent. that's about all we can expect out of this unit right here not bad there's i think 42 or 44 version 2 superchargers here which is pretty awesome to see just all the freaking plugins especially under all these solar canopies the ea station looks like it's been upgraded with battery storage so they have the grid connection needed to power some juicy chargers but man this is the real prize to see this what a cool machine you can see over this way a tesla filling up with gas i don't know what they're doing other than blocking the pump what the heck 
seems wrong. Anyway, this is how you fill up the mega charger thing. So you go here, 400 amps, they run these cables all the way around to charge up the unit, which is pretty freaking sick. So I ran inside and got some Jersey mic. So I got a nice sub for dinner. We're charging up 122 kilowatts at 50%. Pretty good charging session for a version two. We've not been here very long. We've already put 43 kilowatt hours into this thing. Pretty crazy. We could probably leave now and head to the next, but I need to eat food. It's like this car with these bigger stretches that it can do with this longer range means I'm actually okay waiting charging a little bit more. So I don't know, this Model Y looks pretty cool in this matte red. Man, pretty sick. First time road tripping a Tesla in a long time. I missed it. This is great. So it looks like we charged up enough to skip a stop, actually. We're down to 66 kilowatts at 84%. Really good charging up top. I'm impressed. I don't know what it does much higher than this, but we'll find out at some point, I'm sure. Baker, it says it wants another five minutes and then 10% arrival if we leave now to Baker's Field. Um, Let's see, 250 kilowatts, let's go. We wanna pull in dead, take advantage of that at nighttime. Less chance for handles to overheat. Sun is going down here. It was a nice long stop, had dinner, that's fine. This is where we didn't actually even need a version three supercharger. The version two worked out well. Wow, I can barely hold this handle, it is hot. Even the old version two cables, look, it's like a wet noodle, this cable. In the winter time, these things don't even bend it's so funny anyway let's be sure not to curb these martian wheels on the way out of here and off we go into the beautiful sunset And I've just pulled into this hotel here in Barstow, got pretty tired. I figured I'm still on German time. I'll wake up early, it's about 9 p.m. I'll wake up early and complete the drive in the morning. I've tried to get this charger to work. The charger I think works fine. The thing is, I don't know where the J1772 to Tesla adapter is. So I tried using the CCS connection and the car's just not happy about it. It was saying uh, charging equipment not ready and that it wasn't providing voltage. Basically, I think it was just doing the communication through here because it was acting like it wanted to charge, but then it was not getting any power through the DC pins and it kind of freaked the whole thing out. So I'll unlock the charge port, pull it out, no problem at all. I'll repark the car. I really don't know where my J1772 to Tesla adapter went. Someone must have stolen it out of here when they borrowed the car, but that's okay. We're at 54% um, state of charge, totally fine. We'll just juice up at Superchargers tomorrow. And a good morning to you. It's just after five o'clock in the morning. I'm just pulling out of the hotel, but look at what I see that has taken the charging spot, a Karma. That's rare. Pretty sure this is an early Fisker Karma with the solar panel roof. Surprised it's not on fire. How about that? Anyway, that just lost. It's 5.15 in the morning. Cars at again 50 something percent state of charge. I think our plan rather than yesterday was to go all the way to Button Willow Charger or somewhere near there. Uh, we're gonna go to Mojave, juice up real quick, one quick stop, and then I'm gonna pick Drew, who makes Martian wheels, uh, up at his hotel in downtown SLO, and then uh, we're off to the Tesla event. So Waking up early, but feels normal to me. I'm still on German time, so it's like one o'clock in the afternoon. I've been working all morning. It's been great. Really need tint on this car ASAP. This is unacceptable. You can just see right in. Kind of actually weirds me out when I park in a hotel because Barstow, where we are, isn't one of the nicest places on the planet. 52% state of charge. Let's go to Mojave. And just to show you the exact plan, that's where we're heading to. The car wants to go to Mojave, then Paso Robles. <laughs> Paso Robles? How do you say this? I don't know. California's all got weird stuff. This is a version three supercharger, I believe. And Mojave is a version two. Am I correct in thinking that? Nope, 250 kilowatts there. And where is this one? 
let's see 250 kilowatts there rocking don't need the ccs adapter we'll be there at 10 a.m not early enough okay we really need to get a move on then time to cannonball this thing i told drew i'd be there at 9 a.m so we need to somehow shave an hour off of this time good thing we got the plan And hello from the Mojave Supercharger. Did it not say that it was a 250 kilowatt charger? 250 kW max? Oh, those are the V3s over there. That's where we need to go. Okay, I pulled into the old V2s. Let's unplug. Well, we're not even plugged in. Why is the V2s all full and no one's using the V3s? What? This is weird. And plus, why is it completely full this early in the morning? What? Is everyone heading to this Tesla event that we're going to? So yeah, here's the V3s. I didn't see them pulling in because I like almost missed the entrance. Why is no one using these? What the heck? And then you got some, a mobile pallet right there with some 72 kilowatt units. Okay, let's just back this sucker up. Boom, maybe this doesn't work. Maybe that's why everyone's over there. I don't know, that Model Y looks good with that wrap. Let's get this thing juicing early morning charge we need it fast we ripped it here really excited to see our efficiency because that's the fastest i've done a consistent route again allegedly we were going cannonball speeds let's just take a look here at trips 431 watt hour per mile uh, that's not totally accurate though 452 okay so yeah when the speeds go up efficiency goes down there we are charging up why are all those people sharing version 2 superchargers that makes literally no sense there we go charging up 252 kilowatts still at 27 percent. so it definitely was a thermal issue yesterday batteries loving it we need just enough to get to paso robles paso robles is that how you say it california and um yep so we'll charge up here and hit the road as soon as possible. We're, we're doing a good job saving time off. So far, I think we got 10 minutes down. If we can do another 10 minutes on the next stretch, that would be awesome. So we're just tapering off 250 kilowatts here at 37%. To me, that seems more normal. And what a meaty charging curve. If I can get zero to 37 pegged at max, I'm happy with that. That's pretty good. And I'll just watch this ramp down. Still thinks we need 19 more percent to go. Maybe we should try cannonballing and see where did all these cars come from okay it was just dead and then everyone decides to drive by okay so i know these chargers are version twos bakersfield button willow and we're still doing more than 150 kilowatts so it'd be dumb for us to leave and then there's nothing this way so maybe we should charge up just to the point where we're below 150 kilowatts because these are right off of the highway literally you just pull off and plug in and there's a Starbucks. Okay, that's our plan. This is the stop to go to next. So we're gonna do Button Willow. We're gonna do a little out of spec style here. As soon as we taper off 100, and, let's say 144 kilowatts, that's usually what we get on version twos. And I believe, let's just make sure that was a 150. Yes, so it's an updated version two. Seven of 10 available. That would be our only risk is if we have to share a spot, okay but I think we'll be okay. So let's cancel this trip. I'm not loving the new nav, but they are fixing some of it. Oh wait, there's also Kettleman City, but that's too far north. Okay, that's where we wanna go. We can make it now, yes, but we're still doing more power than we'll get when we get there. So we're all about trip time optimization. Okay, learning this thing under 200 kilowatts at 43%. So that's when we match. So that's a good, good number to have now we just need to see when we dip under version 2 supercharging speeds because that's when we no longer get the benefit of version 3 charging 
So let's, I'll keep an eye as to when version three matters, but still version three is still helping all the way up to 44%. That's more than I would have expected. And I think that's better than the last charging curve I tested on the plaid. Thermals matter, of course, but it's nice out right now, 74 degrees and no big solar load. So let's let it charge. And this is looking even better to me as well. 49% still doing 166 kilowatts. This is good. Why haven't we seen this charging at all like this on this trip? So 50% will do 164 kilowatts. Okay, I'm liking it. That's better than the 150 I was expecting. Nice. So we're getting close to leaving, but we're still doing more than we'll get at Button Willow. And now at 53%, we've just hit 150 kilowatts. We've just tapered off. So I say we pretty much unplug here in a few seconds. Once we dip below 144, it's just walking its way down. And then we will head off on our journey, 83 miles, totally doable. I don't know why the car says we still need to charge. 83 miles at 54%, nothing. This is crazy. Okay, so we're at 146. I'm about to get out and we're hitting the road. Welcome to Button Willow. We've just arrived. I've already mobile ordered my Starbucks. And um, pretty funny, the car tried to route us to the charger, which is five miles down the road, which had a whole bunch of cars. It said this one was full and it showed four available, but very clearly it's empty. But it's kind of cool. Maybe everyone just left. Who knows? There could have been a group traveling to this event. And it said there were none available. There was a short wait for a period of time. Uh, and so the car said, hey, I'm routing you to a different supercharger that's less busy. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool vertical integration. But by the time it got here, it didn't recalculate to say you can come back. Uh, so I did that manually. So we're kind of getting there, charging up. Always take the chargers in the shade. You know, handle temperatures are really important. Cable temps, these are all baking in the sun. This one, nice and chilly in the shade. Should give us a little bit better charging session before it derates due to handle and cable temperature. Uh, let's see, we're doing 140 kilowatts. So our plan worked perfectly. That was the perfect strategy to get over here. A lot of police activity on the drive. Couldn't go crazy fast. I'm going to run inside, get the famous strawberry acai drink, and then we're going to charge up just enough to get to the next version three supercharger down the road. There's a pink Model Y that has just shown up. I got my drink. A little bit of a mistake. I did not ask for it without inclusion. So I have the strawberries in there, which I'm not a huge fan of. Let's take a look as to how far away we are. It was crazy busy in there. Okay, so we're charged up to 46%. If we want to go to La Quinta, got to pick Drew up. The most expensive La Quinta you could ever imagine. Oh, it says just stay here and charge. But there's also this supercharger in Paso Robles. This one. And there's also one here. 125 kilowatt. No, thanks. This one. Can we make it there? Paso Rubles. It says five minutes left to charge. Get there at 9%. Let's go. All right. Let's hit the road and charge up there. That'll be faster than sitting here at 140 kilowatts. But good plan to get here. This was definitely the fastest move. All right. Unplug. Off we go.
have arrived at the supercharger at 2% as usual. Pretty good trip. Just used all the extra buffer as speed. Let's get it charging up and then we'll juice up to, I don't know, 50% or so once it tapers off. Go pick up Drew and head over to this thing. And just take a look at this charging location. Tons and tons of superchargers. This is freaking awesome. Everyone here, modified cars, excited about Tesla, heading over to this event. Just spoke with this Model S owner who's leaving now, a viewer, which was great to see. So definitely looking forward to heading over to this thing, seeing how it all goes. We're charging at 252 kilowatts. It seems to really like this 252. I hear they're going to unlock these version three superchargers to do even more. I think that's not a new news. We knew they were going to do it. How they're able to do it with these little tiny cables, even though they're liquid cooled, I don't know. Nice, Duramax, baby. You can always hear a Duramax. Um, yeah, already toasty on the handle. I kind of wish they went with a little bit beefier design for the version threes, why not? Still now down to 244 kilowatts at 29%. And I think the reason is starting to get toasty. Okay, well, doesn't matter. We'll charge up to about 50% and then we'll head into town. So we're down to 202 kilowatts at 42%. Let's take a look as to where we need to go to pick up Drew. We're gonna go to La Quinta Inn. We need to keep in mind, we need enough range to turn around and come back up. I imagine all the level two chargers will be just taken by Tesla owners. So the charging infrastructure in this town is just gonna be maxed out would be my guess. Is there a supercharger nearby? Oh, wait, never mind. There's a whole bunch of charging nearby. That's awesome. All 250 kilowatts. Okay, so let's just go now because we are sort of pressed for time. We have enough to get down there easily. Car can sit with reasonable state of charge. So, and we can charge up at one of those awesome superchargers. That is so cool. So much charging infrastructure for Tesla in California. Oh, gotta turn Bluetooth on. just arriving over to La Quinta to pick up Drew and uh, yeah then we'll ride over to this event together man the timing worked out great shaved quite a lot of time off almost a half hour off uh, and I even got talking to some people at a supercharger could have shaved even more but I think we're got plenty of time for this event all is good I'm just really impressed with the acceleration of this car to its relatively low and meaty mediocre top speed uh yeah this thing needs the 200 mile an hour uncorking not for america but for germany asap needs some big brakes <laughs> they don't really do much at that speed i'll tell you anyway drew should be just over here and there's drew taking his sweet time drinking his coffee at the nicest la quinta in the world here we go off to the tesla event then Woo. hello sir how's it going Good, how are you? <laughs> Good.